Hello everybody, my name is Tor and welcome or welcome back to Anthropology. All right, thank you for joining me in today's video on this gorgeous sunny day. So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about some bags that I've sold or I guess why I sold half of my bag collection. I'm sure that's what brought quite a few of you to this channel in the first place. So I want to touch on why I've sold some bags, what bags I sold, and then also what bags I still have and what bags I've decided to keep. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely keep watching. Click the subscribe um, button if you haven't done so already and you want to be on this journey with me. If you want to be notified when I post, hit the notification bell. Also like this video if it's you know, if you like it and comment anything down below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first part of this video is going to be me talking about why I sold half of my bag collection, the bags that I sold, and then the second part will be bags that I've kept. Okay, so the main factor, I guess that went into, well, I guess there's two main external factors that went into why I sold these bags. And then there's three internal factors that went into why I sold these bags. So the first external factor was I moved. I've touched on this a little bit before. You can see the layout, the space that I'm in is completely different than before. Moved from a 1,000 square foot place to like a 500 square foot place. That just means storage is limited, space is limited. Things that I'm not using that are not serving me day to day, there's no room for, unfortunately. So that was the main reason, or I guess the main external factor um, as to getting rid of things that I just don't have space for them. The second external factor is you know, the economy, the recession. Things are happening, money is tight, um, and I want to travel now. You know, the world has opened up, the pandemic is, you know, she's on her way out, and I want to get back out there. I want to see the world, I want to explore, I want to have adventures, and adventures now cost a hell of a lot more than they did before the pandemic, let me tell you that. So I wanted to free up some extra cash, liquidate some of my things, and use that money to go towards a vacation. I'm actually leaving in a week. We're going to London and Barcelona. I'm so, so excited for it. And I'll bring you along with me for parts of it. Basically, I wanted to free up some cash. And also I didn't wanna have all of my money tied up into physical things. I put a lot of my money into things during the pandemic. I wanted to take my money out of those things. You know, the economy is uncertain. Things are a bit up in the air right now. And I would rather have the cash on hand than have it in handbags. So those were the two external factors. Um, the move and you know the economy and then the internal factors were i wasn't using a lot of the bags that i sold so it may come a surprise to you to know the bags that i've sold i sold my celine nano luggage tote the yellow one that was like a spray of sunshine holy grail bag never thought i would sell it but it just didn't work for my lifestyle you know sometimes you will you think about something you buy it and you really want it to work for you like you really want it to work and it just doesn't and it's about whether or not you want to cut your losses and move that thing on to someone that its lifestyle may suit better or if you want to hold on to it and try to make it work but i just realized for me the bag was a bit too small like it couldn't fit everything that i wanted on a day to day and also the color it was so like delicate i love the style it's my favorite like style of bag like ever but unfortunately it just didn't work for my day-to-day -day life and then i found myself not reaching for it and then i found myself sort of feeling guilty about not reaching for it and resenting it almost and being like, oh my God, I wish I didn't buy it and so much money and now it just sits on my shelf. And I think I wore it less than 10 times in over a year and a half, which is like really not that good. So I decided to part ways with that. The next one, my big Mew Mew tote, I got that one to wear to work, but I ended up just wearing my coach backpack, which is one that I've kept. So I ended up just wearing this bag to work all the time. It fits my laptop, it fits everything. Um, and I got that tote to wear to work as like, um, if I didn't want to wear the backpack, but I just never did. I like never brought it. So that one went as well. My other Mimi bag, my Matalasse shoulder bag, that one also went, I just felt like it wasn't really serving me. I wore it as like an occasion bag, but then I go to so few occasions that I'm like, well, why do I even have this when all I bring is like a few cards in my phone and that can just go in my pocket. So I did move that one on. What else did I sell? I sold my Celine Mini Cabis tote. That one went, I just felt like I was overplaying Tetris with it, honestly, and I rarely wore it. So the main reason 
was I just wasn't using these bags. And since I moved to a smaller space, I really wanted to only keep items that I actually use, that I actually love, that I actually would bring out on a day-to-day -day basis and not ones that would just sit there, sit in the closet, take up space, take up mental energy, take up like money even. So those ones were gone. The second reason, which I touched on a little bit, um, is I wanted to use the money for other things. And, you know, moving really put me into that declutter mode. I was focusing on getting rid of almost everything that didn't serve me. Um, and I think moving is a really good reason to get rid of a lot of things, to reevaluate the things that you have, what you want to bring forward from, I guess, like your past life, your past space into your future life, your future space. And the stuff that I did sort of carry on with me that I did get rid of, I just felt like I wanted to use my money for different things, which my main thing, travel. I, big travel bug, I love traveling. And I felt like I was coping with the pandemic and coping with the ability to not travel with purchasing handbags, with purchasing luxury goods, with spending the money that I would have spent on vacations, on bags. And now that we are, you know, coming out of that cycle, I feel like I don't want to have my money tied up in things anymore, especially things that, as I mentioned before, will just sit there, that are not going to provide me more experiences, that are not going to enrich my life, give me memories, have things that I can pull back to, you know, things that will just not stop me from living, but live in a different way. I want to experience things more, enrich my life, you know, go places, see things that I've never seen before, hear languages that I've never heard before, try things that I've never tried before, as opposed to you know, having all that money in a handbag. And I think now that we've booked this trip, the costing and like seeing how much I would have to spend on a vacation versus how much I've spent on luxury goods in the past, it's really crazy. Like I see like this bag now and I'm like, oh my God, that's a vacation. Whereas before I would see it and be like, oh my God, I love that bag. Let me just buy it. Like not even think about it. And I really think that my perception of like cost my value of a dollar, I guess, has changed where I just can't justify the luxury purchases anymore. Like also, I mean, obviously they've gone up like crazy over the past few years and you know, the prices are just astronomical now for what you get. Like at the end of the day, these things are just things. Most of the time it's just clothing on your body and it just like how the design is and how the cut is will like dictate, I guess, the price and like marketing. And I just don't buy into it as much anymore. I don't subscribe to it and it, all of the stuff now just looks like stuff to me. Whereas before it really looked special. It looked different. It looked like it was worth the money. It was sparkly, but now luxury has lost its luster. And then the last one, which I also touched on a little bit is I was in declutter mode. I wanted to get rid of everything that wasn't servicing me. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people should do this. You know, the, the spring cleaning concept where spring comes around, you look at all the stuff that you hoarded over the winter and you're like, oh my God, all of this stuff has to go. And I think it's like really important to go through your wardrobe um, and definitely reevaluate. Are these things bringing you joy? Are these things serving you or are you servicing them? And I felt like I was servicing my luxury goods like way more than they were servicing me. Anytime I'd go out with that silly nano bag, I would be like, my eyes are on it, like locked and loaded. That thing is not touching the ground. It's not touching my body. I'm like holding it away from me. Um, and we're like walking together, but we're not touching. And I would be so scared about color transfer. I'd be so scared about the weather. And it just, I really babied it. And it stopped me from enjoying it. Like the price point was almost too high for me to really enjoy it. I was just more scared that something would happen to it and then I would lose like all my money. Like I was scared about it getting destroyed so I never wore it and I just kept it in the cupboard, which is not a good way to live. It's not a good way. Um, now I'm much more free with my things, I would say. I've stopped caring so much about if I squish it or if it touches something or if something spills on it by accident. Like I'm just, I just wanna live my life. I don't want to be worrying about everything all the time. I just want to be go out there, do what I do and call it a day. I don't want to be like, oh my God, is it going to get color transfer? If there's color transfer, will I be able to sell it? If I can't resell it, will I lose all my money? Like, I don't want that mental gymnastics anymore. I just want to go out, live my life, use my things and call it a day. So those are the reasons why I sold a lot of these things. I did have 14 handbags at my peak. Um, now I have seven. I have six in front of me here, but I have seven in total. So I've cut my collection in half. 
you know, I just think also the pandemic, everyone purchasing, everyone buying online, everybody just like showing their constant hauls, you know, it's really unhealthy to see all these people consuming at exorbitant rates all around the world. And it's, you know, we compare ourselves to these other people, we compare ourselves to the influencers online that often either get gifted these items or they purchase in return. So it's like hard to know what's real and what's fake, what people are actually purchasing and then how to decipher and, you know, try and not internalize it and make it so you purchase these things and you do all of these things to try to emulate these lifestyles that we think are normal and that have become normalized, I guess, within our culture. So anyways, spiel over. Those, that's why I've sold these things. Now let's get into the bags that I've kept and why. Where should I start? I guess I'll start here. So this is my Coach 1947. 1949? I don't know. My coach backpack. I love this bag. I've spoken about it so many times. It's a workhorse of a bag. I feel like it's amazing quality and I would 1000% repurchase it again, although I feel like it's going to last me a lifetime. So this is one that I've kept. It's my go-to work bag. Love it so much. Next, this is an oldie but a goodie. My Prada messenger bag. So I didn't sell any of my Prada bags. I still have the Prada Toad as well. I'll input a clip here so you can see but I kept my Prada messenger bag this one is great for vacation I think I might bring this one to Europe um you know in case it rains it's nylon it wicks off in case you know I need to hold a water bottle I can hold that as well and it's black it's like close to the body I can squish it it doesn't matter and I really kept bags that were no fuss no muss and a lot of my darker bags as well so that's interesting next had to keep my Bulgari mini Serpenti forever um Oh my god. Bag. I love this one. Oh, what's in here? What did I buy? Oh, I went to the grocery store. Anyways, I love this bag for just like an everyday moment. This one I think I'm going to bring to events like I brought the Mimi one before because it's black. I can keep my few cards. I can put like a lip balm and call it a day. So really love this one. Um don't think I would ever get rid of that. On the mini bag train, I kept my uh, Bottega Veneta candy cassette bag in the parakeet color. I really like this bag for every day as well. I often wear this to the grocery store because I put like my cards, I put my keys, it fits like all the essentials. And I just really like the, the lambskin also since it was like a gift from my partner. I don't want to get rid of that, but yeah, kept this one. On the gift train, I did keep my Celine Ava in the green color. I actually used this one today when we went to brunch. Um, but yeah, I really like this bag. And since it was a gift, I would not get rid of it. But I also just use it. I use it like substantially more than any of my other Celine bags that I had. Fits like comfortably under the arm. So this one is a keeper. And then lastly, probably my most used bag is my Marc Jacobs the tote bag. This one, workhorse. This is what I wanted from the Celine Nano luggage tote, but I didn't get. And I'm glad that I got the uh, fabric one. I'm sort of straying away a bit from leather bags, to be honest. I'm moving more in towards like technical fabrics, just because where I live in Vancouver, with the rain, with, you know, like the temperamental weather, you can get caught in the rain in like an instant. It's called rain Coover for a reason. I mean, right now it's like 30 degrees and sunny, but basically I got this bag because it can hold my books as well as like all of my other daily essentials, like my little Louis Vuitton pochette, my wallet, you know, it can fit like literally everything. And I love the cross body strap being like very wide and the top handle and like the zipper even. It's very easy to use. So I did keep this one and I do love it like a lot. So those are the bags that I have decided to keep from my collection and will not be getting rid of. Um, I definitely think I went like overboard and like anything in life. I feel like the pendulum swings one way and then it swings back the other so it can fall in the middle. And I went from not having any bags to like having 14 bags to now it's sort of swung to seven. And I feel very comfortable with that. I don't feel like I'm working for these bags when I wear them. I feel like I can just put them on and go about my business like they're not even there, which is what I value. I value the freedom in that. I don't like being so put together that I feel constricted 
by my outfit or like I can't do something or I can't go somewhere or I can't like I don't like not feeling like I can do something or not feeling comfortable in a situation I just want to wear these items and just go about my life and these are lessons that I've definitely received and I will be taking forward and if I have any advice for people it's like know your lifestyle <laughs> know yourself before you buy really expensive things and you know a lot of this can come with time and with practice like if I didn't buy all of those things if I didn't swing one way if I didn't scratch that itch would I come to the realizations that I have probably not but it's definitely important to learn and trial and I don't think there's anything wrong with buying a lot and then selling and just like figuring out we're all like learning we're all on this journey you know on our own journey of life to figure out and understand ourselves and you know this is just my journey this is just my consumption journey that I'm on and you know you're all along like with me and I'm loving hearing your own stories in the comments about you know bags that you've bought bags that you've sold where you're at in your consumption journey so yeah that's basically where I'm at thank you all for watching if you made it this far please like comment subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see y'all next time bye guys